Welcome to another edition of Pens Down. Here, journalists are not the reporters or presenters. They are the newsmakers. The tables turn and we talk about their journalism journey. Today, my guest is a Northern Sector editor for DailyMailGH.com and also editor with the Kumasi branch of Asasi Radio. He is also a former reporter with Sika FM based in Kumasi in the Ashanti region of Ghana and Ashanti Regional Correspondent for Radio XYZ. Jonathan Ofori is my guest today on Pens Down. Welcome, my brother. Thank you very much, and good to see you. Right. Um, some people get got into journalism by accident. Some of them went to, into it by design. What is your own story? How did you discover the journalist in you? Thank you very much. Well, to start with, let me say a big thank you for, uh, you know, arranging this 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 all important uh, encounter with you. And I would also say kudos to your team for this um, encounter or this program. Clearly, thank you very much. We are now being asked the questions. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike some of us where ministers are home before us for That's us to right. do the questioning. Yes. Anyway, back to your question. I wouldn't say it was accident. Um, mm. I would say it was or it is a divine encounter. Mm. So, yes, I would say journalism is a divine profession. And so mm. for us, looking at what really exists in our surroundings, in society, mm. um, that informed us. In fact, that motivated us to drop the chalkboard, drop the chalks, mm. and then pick the pen ourselves to highlight what people want to see and hear mm. as far as our setting is concerned. And so the journey started when I met this man called Bafo Jobing. Okay. He was the proprietor of a school of which I was uh, one of the, his, his, his staff. Mm. So he, during conversation with him, I realized that issues with sanitation was a great concern. Mm. And that he needed it to be highlighted beyond what media practitioners have been doing. Okay. So it struck me and I said, no, this man clearly wants to tell me I there's a potential in me, mm. you know, to highlight what people do want to hear and see. And so for me, that was where the journey started. Okay. Like Komala Dumo, I started as a citizen journalist. Yeah. Not to, not to go to a journalism school. Mm. For us, we, whilst we were in school at the University of Cape Coast, we did, be, we, we, we did it, we did it on the, on the job training. Okay. So, like Ghana, Ghana, as you may know, radio stations will call you when you have the news. Mm. You give the update, and that's it. Yeah. Whether or not uh, they will call you is their is their own editorial discretion. Yeah. So we were just freelancing, mm. if I may tell you. And the breakthrough was when I covered um the assembly election for uh, the then municipal chief executive for. Mm. So Kore Mampo, Ali Dusidu, okay. at the time the MPP are taking power. And so using social media, I seek to draw people's attention to what's going mm. on mm. in my jurisdiction. And that was where the, the journey started. I gave a comprehensive report okay. about how the man in question was elected amidst heavy security. Mm. So that began the 
end of my journey with Sika FM. And okay. X, Y, Z. Who saw the newsworthy staff in me. Okay. And then we began the conversation for me to be uh, joining the team as a full-blown staff of mm. uh, XYZ Broadcasting. Okay. We truncated, we truncated the journey because of some issues, which I mm. think we will expand it during this conversation. Mm. Um, and I set up Daily Mail. Okay. So Daily Mail has been has been the fulcrum of my journalism career. Okay. Set up by my boss, Kent Mensa. Okay. But he has been he has been pivotal in this mm. journey. Mm. He, he has been encouraging some of us to pursue what mm. we want to do. So yeah. Daily Mail was set up by Kent, myself, and sub top editors in the in, in, in Ghana. Okay. Which is still running. Mm. So uh, I was made the modern sector editor of that online um, Portal. You know, platform. Mm. And so with my works, uh, you know, recommendations were made, and that is why uh, that was when we landed the Asase job. So currently, now how I'm, many years? How many years in all has it been through this journey? From your your time as a cab reporter or a reporter under study up until this time, about how many years are we talking about? It will close. It's close to uh, close to ten years. Mm. Because yeah, because when you add where I started as a freelance journalist, mm. yeah, it's ten years now. Mm. Now, in these ten years. What would you say stands out as the most challenging assignments you have had to cover? Hmm. That's a million dollar question. I have been, <laughs> I have been covering um, mm. events, mm. Uh, some very bloody, some violent, I must mm. say. Um, one of them that stands out, and indeed that. Um, put our lives in jeopardy was the recent clashes between police and military and the people of the Adrasich Adumase constituency. You remember yes. um, the, the, there was a protest about the death of, of a community member and a social mm -hmm. media activist, yeah. which escalated where mm -hmm. police in their own way you know, mm -hmm. wanted to uh, calm things down mm. resulted in opening fire, killing two people uh, in the process. In fact, journalists at the time, including myself, were caught up in this crossfire, mm. and and it it was it was be between myself and God, honestly, because you you may be hit by a stray bullet in, in all these circumstances, and. Uh, it was a challenging moment for me because at the point you may have to wonder whether or not you may be returning home mm. um, at that particular point in time because it was a very, very loud but violent mm. you know, event for us to cover. Now, let me, let me walk through your mind on the back of that near-death experience or brace with death experience in the line of duty. When you got home that evening, um, did this kind of experience shake your resolve to reconsider journalism for a profession, or it rather strengthened your desire to do more and become a voice for the voiceless? Wow, I I, I must say that um, it it wasn't it wasn't a very uh, you know easy situation for some of us mm. especially where you see lives mm. were ended as a result yeah. of uh, bullets being fired mm. and where you have to even report mm. uh, from hospitals where people are wounded you find yourself yeah. that perhaps if you were in the same 
situation how yeah. will this happen so for some of us we got depressed mm. depression setting we, mm. we we had to we had to you know at some point uh, wanted to quit because it, it, it was a very troubling situation for us mm. um, seeing blast things you know which you have to endure at the end of the day and, and also merge that with work activities as well because your mm. editors wouldn't mind that whether or not you've seen dead bodies you still have to report so for for some of us we nearly we nearly said goodbye to the job but we were encouraged mm. by our new colleagues mm. and, and for some of us some of our family members are counselors as well so fortunately okay. for us mm. they they gave that intervention in the form of mm. counseling and giving us some encouragement to do mm. more. so mm. i would say that it was very challenging but at mm. the end of the day such interventions as i've said mm. did the trick mm. now let's look at these 10 years you have been here there has been a lot of attrition so many highly trained highly qualified journalists have abandoned the boats some of them have landed in public relations or just anything that uh, they can lay hands on. What do you think, from where you say, what do you think is accounting for this rate of attrition in journalism? It's simple. A chunk of us pursue our own interest rather mm. than the national interest. A chunk of us are working in media houses owned by politicians. And mm. so at some point in time, we just dance to the gallery of mm. these politicians. At some point in time, because of hardship, journalists in turn had to succumb to office, which clearly will not put food on the table, but they want to be seen working. And so when they find themselves in such a situation, they have to sell their conscience in some cases to these uh, politicians, such that they end up being offered juicy appointments, all in the name of serving their own interest mm. in this case. Mm. So as you said, we have a chunk of us holding high positions in government and even at, in government agencies. Mm. It, it, the long and short of it is that we still need to put food on the table. We cannot make the country move forward. And so mm. if these politicians are at the helm of affairs, why don't we be on the same page with them? Mm. And I find it very scandalous mm. on, 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 on our part or mm. in this part of the country because we are the fourth state of the realm. When these things happen, when journalists are starved, when the journalist is under-resourced, I tell you, the possibility of reporting good content will be very, very low. And mm. it cannot shape our democracy. Going now, let me quickly follow up with this. The political ownership of the media, a lot of politicians and politically exposed persons are now setting up and owning media establishments. We are a young, fledgling democracy. Are we caught in trouble? Is there a reason to be worried or all is well? Well, is it a worrying trend, especially when um, uh, you have these politicians from those divide ending up, you know, grabbing radio frequencies themselves mm. uh, uh, which appears to be although it is being regulated but mm. how it is being regulated needs to be looked at another thing we have to also bear in mind is the fact that looking at how the situation is we I see the politicians do set the agenda for us because mm. we are vulnerable. 
they have they have they have they have you know monitored or observed the situation that to some extent that even with our unions are now toothless. This appears to derail the exact fundamentals of how the journalists should be working. Mm. If I am pursuing an investigative piece and I know that what I'm doing will expose the rot, I should be protected. I should be given the resources, if there is any, to mm. do my work devoid of any political in, uh, you know, interference. But here is the case that actions and inactions from journalists mm. and even our leadership appears to touch this effort. Look at our, our membership re regime as GJA. Mm. How you even apply. Yeah. People may even think that when you come, you are, you are coming to even usurp on my or my mandate. Mm. You are coming to speak the coup to even overthrow me. And so you will not allow you to even, <laughs> even join. They will just cripple you with some uh, excuses. Mm. You understand my point? So this regime, you know, the membership regime should be advanced to even the least person who who is even uh, a burdened journalist. Mm. So these are some of the things we have to look at. Otherwise, we will not become a strong force mm. and we will end up allowing the politicians to bulldoze themselves into our territory. And which for me is it, it's a very dangerous situation mm. and it could put uh, or plant our, our nation into jeopardy. How has social media shaped the practice of journalism? Well, it has its strengths, it has its uh, weakness. Mm. Uh, let me start from the weakness. Mm. We can't run away from the era of fake news. Yes. Where people, journalists, we, my, like myself, we all, mm. some of us fall foul in spreading fake news. And because we have the social media platform, yeah. we are always, we are always, you know, uh, we always tend to violate the ethics mm. of journalism such that even news items are not verified before we mm. just publish it there. Yeah. To some extent, we always find ourselves in landing into defamation suits. Mm. We publish on verified uh, news items. The least we can do is to just flood it on social media pages, which then to injure or you know bring organizations individuals names into disrepute some of mm. us have been subject to what lawsuits yeah and uh, they, 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 in fact it, it could even lead us to you know um situations where we we, we will be even jettisoned by yeah. our media organizations i, I have seen in many times where journalists who face court in terms of defamation mm. are left to their fate by their media organizations because clearly when their lawyers study it and they think the company may be held liable, clearly they have to just leave you to your fate and fight mm. your own fight. Mm. So it comes down to the need for the media circles to be strengthened and we have to unionize to mm. pursue our agenda. The positives, so many. I have posted, um, you know, a story about a building which was which is near collapse, mm -hmm. and an intervention was 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 made. And the mm. story was posted on social media across all my platforms. Mm. So it, it it has so many benefits, and even with this social media. Uh, um, um, you know, engagement. Mm. It has exposed some of us to new trends of, uh, you know, sending information which could connect to so many people across the world. Yeah. It has also exposed us to new, uh, you know, opportunities. Yeah. 
for some of us, we even got to hear of journalism opportunities on social media. Okay. You understand my yeah. point? Yeah. Some are held virtually, with some you have to travel and, you know, expose yourself to so many uh, things in the outside world. So mm. it has its positives and negatives, but I would say the positive outweighs the negative only if we use it wisely. Now, on social media, Africa has richer bloggers created out of social media than richer journalists. Is there something journalists did not do, which is why the bloggers have taken advantage to better their economic law while we still continue to grapple with the very basics? Where did we miss out as journalists? It still, it still has to, it still has to boil on the need or the failure by leadership mm. to have to have us to, to form a common union mm. and expose all of us to the various trends yeah. of journalism. Mm. You understand my point? Yes. It still boils down to leadership. What has what has the GJA been doing apart from you know issuing awards to the best journalists? Mm. Perhaps bloggers have, have been, you know, providing us with good content, yet it appears what they provide in our setting, in my view, are not brought to the limelight. Mm. They publish the stories and then the mainstream media will have to follow it up to also embellish or, you know, polish their content. <laughs> Why don't we come together, form a common goal, mm. form a common union, and pursue an agenda? See, we keep failing journalists, and in this case, the GJA keeps failing us because we are all, they are only heard during awards. Mm. When was the last time you heard that the GJA had organized, you know, from their own resources, organized some refresher courses for journalists? How often is that here? Until they go for sponsorship from maybe uh, one or two companies, you wouldn't hear them you know, organizing these stuff. And for me, it begs the question whether or not we are ready as an organization or as a fraternity mm. to pursue the, 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 the national interest. And mm. so the bloggers will just see who are enlightened we we'll just use this opportunity to make money for themselves. Mm. Because now you are, is going to... you are very much in yeah. the political reporting terrain. That is where all the signs and wonders always happen. Exactly. How many times have you been approached with anything, whether monetary or material, that, oh, this story you are pursuing, Trash the story, kill the story, and take this. Have there been any such approaches? I'm talking about attempts at bribing you to compromise the work you are doing. It comes in two folds. Mm. Down here in, in our in our setting, um, we have a, a terrain we call Soli. <laughs> oh, I'll say it. Yes. At least. <laughs> you are when you are done at the end of the day, you are sorted. You know mm. the story is done. Mm. But from where you you are coming from, mm. some of us have encountered such uh, uh, you know instances where yeah. cash amounts have been given to us to kill stories. Mm. But the question is. Or the question that struck us mm. when we attempt mm. to take such amount is that mm. at the end of the day, have you served the national interest? Mm. Is the story going to shake conversations? Let me give you a scenario. Um, mm. There was this uh, nursing training college in the Ashanti region whose 
principal was alleged to have, uh, as it were, embezzled uh, funds. Mm. He got hold of this story. A chief called us, a chunk of journalists, trying to grease our palms. Mm. See, we took the money and we did the story. <laughs> what we did was that, yes, what we, what we did was that when we were leaving, in fact, we knew what was going to happen, that this mm. man would our palm. So when we were leaving, we took his number and said we will call him, only for him to find out that we had returned the money via mobile money to him, mm. expressing our discomfort. Mm. We felt very, very disappointed at his uh, conduct and told him that we were going to do the story. And that gave us that, uh, that uh, fortitude that mm. it was indeed a big story and that if that story was published, heads will roll. Yeah. We will expose the rot in society for people mm. to know that an intervention will have to be made in that particular school, which is clamoring for a rescue. So we did mm. the story, published it, and at the end of the day, this woman was facing inquiry. Mm. It's still ongoing, and uh, I think... But for COVID, we, we could have, you know, finished with that committee sitting. But it, we are still monitoring that uh, event that mm. is on full. Does that's, journalism that's pay? It doesn't. <laughs> you have passion. <laughs> Follow your passion. Journalism doesn't pay. Mm. It doesn't pay at all. Mm. In our setting, the emphasis is in our setting, it doesn't pay, especially when media houses are run by politicians. Mm. Politicians taking advantage of our vulnerability to make us poor. Mm. You understand my point? Yes. Um, we are in cases where people take delight in we have situations where journalists are now taking delight in reporting political stories than issues that affect society. Yes. Bread and butter issues is what we are doing because people need money to pay fees. Mm. People need money as it were and back on their own uh, uh, you know training or you know to go to school. And so it doesn't pay in our setting, but it opens doors when we mm. continue to do and do it better. Mm. Should journalists be licensed? That's a strange question. <laughs> Very strange question. Um, talking about journalism, journalists being licensed, I would urge persons who ask such questions mm. to go back to what the Constitution says. Mm. There should be freedom of the press. The yeah. press should be given the latitude to do what is expected of them. Mm. And so if we want to license journalists, mm. it means we want to you, as it were, prevent them from doing the needful. And if that has to happen, we have to go and amend the Constitution of the Republic, which mm. gives the press access to information. If, mm. we, if we start to cap it, it means that we are trying to kill democracy. It mm. means we cannot expose the rot. Yes. Even there should be, we should question the licensing regime. Mm. How is it going to be? Who who even qualifies to license you? Yes. Who even qualifies to be a journalist? Mm. We saw people who didn't even step into journalism school, but mm. are doing great things. Yes. Kumla Dumont, yes. Kumla Dumont exposed the rot at SNET. 
Yeah. This is a man who perhaps did not receive some training. Mm. And that's why I'm saying we should I'm questioning the licensing re- regime. How mm. how how what would be the criteria? Yeah. Is it that we should all enroll into uh, the, the public university? And even how how many of us can even afford yes. in, in these harsh economic crisis? Mm. So it is something, there should be a national dialogue on how this, this should be carved, carved out. Mm. Although I agree that there are rots in the system, mm. but we should tread closely. Otherwise, we end up killing the democracy we seek to protect. And we should be guided by the Constitution. Mm. If we are to roll back the hands of time, 12 years, are you still going to choose journalism? I will at any day. <laughs> I will at any day. It is, it, is, it is a profession that exposes people to the realities of life. Mm. It is a profession that exposes people to different categories of people. Mm. It strengthens you to know that as you may have a smooth sailing rise, people are suffering. Mm. It reinforces the need for us to be the voice of the voiceless. And that, mm. for me, is my passion. Mm. Mm. Ten years. What are your golden memories? Is there anything that stands out as gold for you? Well, that was when I reported mm. that even if I haven't won an award before, at least mm. I have solved the problem of some basic school children whose mm. uh, you know building was near collapse. Yeah, the country may have recorded a tragic mm. incident, but for my story. Mm. When it happened, authorities seeing my story contacted me for an intervention. And, and mm. this for me is my greatest golden opportunity. At least I have used my medium to solve the problem of people who are going to seek knowledge in a dilapidated mm. structure. Mm. And that's what you me. mentioned. <laughs> you mentioned Soleil earlier. Mm-hmm. For those who don't know, uh, for the sake of our international audience, Soleil is that money in an envelope handed over to journalists after they go to cover an assignment. Normally, it is considered a bit of a thank you something, yeah. but I want to pick his talk. What are your thoughts on Soleil? Well, this is a difficult question. Is the organizers of programs, um, in my view, have no obligation to sort you out when you are invited? Mm. Yeah. But um, I still insist that in our setting, the environment has made it so. We have a chunk of us who are not on payroll, Mm. yet we are journalists. Mm. The least opportunity he gets is to attend these assignments. Mm. And when they are given to, uh, when they are given these solid, the first thing that comes in mind is that perhaps this is going to sort out home affairs. That's right. Rejecting or neglecting the fact that these organizers may fall into the the realm of scandals. Mm. So the question some of us will be asking is that giving you this envelope, mm. when they fall into a scandal mm. and you are deployed to, as it were, report on these, how will yeah. you do it? But <laughs> as I say, the our setting here as journalists mm. has that flat beat. Mm. 
uh, you know, some form of uh, a better conditions of service. Mm. You understand my point? And yes. this, for me, opens such doors for people to just receive it. Mm. And as it were, your audio is off. We are guided by events. And so um, receiving receiving it means that yes, we are yeah, good. Can you hear me? Yes, we are good. Yeah. Re receiving such kinds of uh, uh, you know, envelopes for me I will not say it's bad, but we have to be guided by our ethics. Mm. You, if you have done 10 years, then you entered somewhere 2013. Social media was not too prominent. A lot has taken place, changes yeah, yeah. in the terrain as far as journalism is concerned. What is your candid assessment of the quality of journalism in Ghana today? Well, we are not doing journalism. Yes, that's the truth, boss. We are not doing journalism. We are doing ambulance journalism. And let me explain. Ambulance journalism in the sense that we wait for things to happen before we go and report. But mm -hmm. we don't try to expose what may happen for us to report. You understand my point? Yes. See, there's uh, uh, um, um, issues of um, uh, you know illegal mining. Yes. Until until the media started this campaign, this thing was happening. Who took this initiative, as it were, to report it to highlight the these threats? Mm. It was after the president, you know, ascended the presidency, highlighted it, you know, that was where people's attention was even drawn to the fact yeah. that you yeah. have some environment somewhere which is depleting as a result mm. of illegal mining. And with this illegal mining thing, you know, people are profiting from it. You understand? Including journalists. Yeah. So we are not doing journalism. We are just doing ambulance journalism because we have we appear to have deviated from the norm and seeking our own interest politically, religiously. And you can you, you can think of it. We don't try to uncover what is going on in our in, in our society and I don't know whether you've observed mm. whenever these fellowships come up mm. whenever these opportunities come up how many Ghanaians although I know there are a few of us yeah. how many Ghanaians you know are you know major the list of journalists who have been selected by these uh, top international fellowships, as it were, to join, mm. to acquire knowledge in journalism outside this country. How many mm. of us? It has always been the Manasses, the Anasses, yeah. and, and, and those two. So it begs the question, have we specialized? Mm. Anasses do investigative journalism. Uh, Manasseh too is doing investigative journalism. Mm. Somebody may choose to do climate change or you know environmental journalism. Yes. Somebody may choose to do uh, you know sanitation. Mm. We don't specialize, and so the editor will sit somewhere, hear of a fire incident, only for you to be deployed to go and report. But if you are specialized, the editor will reason mm. that as for this portion. Or as for this encounter, Jonathan can do it because he is into legal and political journalism. Mm. You understand my point? Yes. 
it, it yes. begs the question as to whether or not journalists in Ghana do have or take interest in specializing, uh, you know, as, as far as journalism is concerned. So it is something we have to take a critical look at. Otherwise, mm. we all end up landing in the same page, reporting the NDC MPP. Mm. But we haven't done much to shape a conversation mm. as far as specializing. Let me round off this conversation with this question. Would you encourage your children or some mentee to take to journalism for a profession? In our setting, no. See, I keep saying in our setting because the avenues for you to even climb to the top as far as journalism is concerned is, 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 is you know, it's so, it's so bulky. Mm. While some may have a smooth sailing ride, for mm. some of us, we didn't. Because we are, we are in an era, even politicians may even uh, infiltrate the system. And sometimes mm. our lives are at stake. Mm. Mm. Let me pull the brakes here. This has been intriguing. Absolutely exciting conversation by everyone. Jonathan Ofori, all the way from the Ashanti region of Ghana. For those who do not know, the Ashanti region of Ghana is Ghana's second biggest city. And that is where he's, he's based and where he practices from. We've looked at his journalism journey. Some 10 years and the issues have been really exciting, the perspective deep and the thoughts very provoking. This has been pensed down. Here, we talk journalism journey. The only show all over the world where the journalists are the newsmakers, not the reporters or the presenters. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, my brother, for your time. I'm most grateful. Right. We'll be back next time with another edition. We'll have another colleague join us where we'll still be talking their journalism journey. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.